We will now begin the session on the success story of a Taiwanese entrepreneur. May I now invite Ms. Xie Wang, Chairman, HTDVIA Group, to come on stage. We will conduct a Q&A session. We will conduct a Q&A session after Ms. Wang's presentation. Please re be reminded to put down your questions on the question paper in your submit folder. Our staff will collect the papers before the Q&A session starts. May I now pass the floor to Mr. Lowe, please. Um, it's wonderful to have Cher. Actually, she was supposed to come yesterday afternoon, but uh, her flight got cancelled. So she had to fly to Shenzhen and then come down, and she arrived at 9.30 last night just to come in a 10-hour conference. So uh, let me try and give you a little bit of background on Cher, and then we'll ask her to do her presentation, and then we'll have a dialogue. Um, she graduated from Berkeley, um, studying in economics. Actually, when she was young, she wanted to become a pianist and a composer. So I would be very interested to hear why she's given that up. And then in 1982, after graduation, she joined her uh, sister and brother-in-law's company, uh, First International Computers. She became the director of sales, and then she made one sale of... Um, uh, roughly about 700,000 US dollars. And right. that guy who, 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 who purchased something from her ran away to Spain, Barcelona. Guess what? Cher pursued him and went to Barcelona with a bodyguard and stayed there for six months trying to recover her money. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and then in 1988, she started... Uh, via technologies, and in 1997, she started High Technology Computer Corporation. And last year, April, Forbes uh, ranked her as the richest person in Taiwan. And also in August, Forbes rated her as the 20th most powerful woman in the world. And what's also amazing is that Xie's father, Wang Yongqing, is a very famous and successful business person, business leader in Taiwan. So why did she not follow his footsteps and work in the family business and start her own business? I'm sure these are all questions that we'd love to hear from her. So Xie, over to you. Thank you very much, Vincent. Well, I guess I have to figure out how this works. <laughs> Well, really, such a great event. Good morning, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really honored to be invited here today to talk about SMEs. And I want to thank Hong Kong Airbag to arrange such a great event. It's great to see so many of you here today, and it truly really reflects Hong Kong's business vitality. I also want to thank Asia Pacific neighbors and friends through APAC. We have extended our arms and embraced each other, and together we will support each other through this economic situation. A good many of you here today have started your own SMEs, and some of you have expanded upon your original dreams. Looking back, I'm sure that many of your experiences have been fun. I have also started a few businesses myself, including HTC, a major smartphone innovator, and the VR semiconductor design house. And I have enjoyed every minute of it. And I truly hope that entrepreneurs here today feel the same. Like everybody smile here, right? <laughs> I'd like to start today by talking about happiness. Happiness is a universal human desire. And I hope that the dynamic SME sector is one of the keys to it. Why? Because. Small businesses are the lifeblood of every nation in the world. I know that SMEs sometimes feel like a very small fish in a very big pond. However, I can assure you, you are very important. You are the engine of the economy. SMEs account for over 90% of the companies and a lion's share of jobs. There's a lot of people around the world who depend on SMEs not only the employees, but also their families and the shops. 
and the servers that they are using. SMEs are also the source of much of the world's innovation. So we are crucial to the sustainable economic growth. So the more dynamic an SME sector, the higher the standard of living for everyone. And I'm not just talking about the normal GDP. A flourishing economy improves the country's growth national happiness too. It even improves our health. Earlier this month, an extensive study by Louisiana State University showed that communities in the USA with a larger proportion of local SMEs actually have more healthier populations with low rates of mortality, obesity, and even diabetes. And that is for sure a good thing. You know, when you hear the big names in the news such as Google or Sony, it often seems that they have always been that big and they have always been that dominant in their own market. But it's really easy to forget that today's global company actually started very, very small, real small. Facebook was famously started by just one person, programming through the night in Harvard Dome. That's a really small business. And the Google search engine was homework for two college friends, but the actual Google company started in the garage. That's a very small business. Sony started out in the bombed out building in Tokyo as a one-man radio repair shop. That's a very small business. Starbucks, like McDonald's and many large food and drink chain stores, started with just one store in downtown Seattle selling coffee beans. And the founder were two teachers and one writer. That's a very small business. I started VR technology in 1987 with a handful of semiconductor friends designing computer chips in my living room. I think that's a small business. A friend and I later on created HTC in a small office of VR's headquarters. While we expanded quickly, we actually start really small. What all these have in common is that although they started small, they had a big dream, and they really stuck with it. I would say that the true key to the success of these small businesses was identifying their vision. Once they did that, it gave them a focus for the future growth. We have to know what we want to achieve, otherwise we will have no direction, and that means no effective strategy for the future growth. Facebook originally offered social posts. It's all about integrated lifestyle applications. But throughout the vision has been very, very simple. Connecting people, making them more social. By sticking to that vision, it has gone from serving a few hundred college students to over 850 million people around the world, helping them stay in touch. And it has gone from a net loss of 3 million US dollars to probably today's uh, internet IPO ever. Right from the beginning, Google had a very clear direction, the search engine. While they have expanded their vision with the new tools to make the world's information more accessible, the core platform of the company remains its search engine. Sony found the real direction. When the founders started building consumer-friendly transistor radios, they were a huge success. And it focused the company in developing communication and entertainment devices. Starbucks didn't really serve drinks until Howard Schultz visited Italy. And it really inspired him to bring this uh, South European cafe culture into USA. And they started Starbucks legend of today. Business have always started with a vision that comes deep from the heart. 
When I started my first company, VR Technology, I was working in the marble industry and was frustrated that we have to buy all our chips from overseas. I believe that Taiwan could design semiconductors too and could pack more features into those tiny chips to save more space for the PC motherboards. Then I found two friends who agreed with me. Then we started VR Technology. When I was a young, aspiring woman in my 20s, I was very enthusiastic and keen to accomplish whatever was necessary, except I did not know how to direct this energy efficiently. All I knew is that I was very passionate, so passionate, I would carry these 40 pounds PC desktop computers all over Europe to show my European customers about the PC multiple performance. I would drag this 40 pounds computer up and down the train because I cannot afford a car. So I still remember the soul muscles and, and bruises I had. And in my tunnels, I would sit on the train and started daydreaming about the computer so small that it could fit into my hand. A computer, it might be an organizer, it might be a phone, and it might be a calculator. And at least I can show my my customers much easier and it's going to be much lighter. It was a silly idea at first, but it developed into a vision. A vision I kept in my heart for years. And then when the right technology came around, I met a few friends in Taiwan who shared my vision and we started HTC. All of these companies, even they weren't sure at first, where they will find commercial success once they identify their vision. It gave them the direction. And the rest, as they say, is all history. Here in Asia Pacific, starting and running business is really in our DNA. APEC accounts for 40% of the world's population, yet we create more than 55% of the world GDP. They should tell you something about our productivity, our creativity, and our willingness to work hard. I hear there are about 300,000 SMEs in Hong Kong, <laughs> right? That means every 23rd person is an entrepreneur. Just think on the train to get here today, there were probably three or four people around you who studied their own business. In China, there are around 45 million SMEs. And in Chinese Taipei, over 100,000 startups every year. That's about 300 new businesses created every day. Why is Asia so conducive to SME creation? Because we are dynamic. We appreciate that hard work is the key to success. We are very innovative, quick to find new ways of producing goods and get them to market faster and more efficiently. And with three billion, about three billion of us in the region, we have a big market and a strong local competition. And that's on top of the competition we face from overseas. And this is a great incentive to keep innovating. Knowing how vital SMEs are to our economy, APEC governments are working hard to encourage entrepreneurs. As China's Premier Wen said earlier this month, SMEs are a major channel for providing jobs, the most important platform for growth, and the most important strength for innovation. Since finance is always the biggest hurdle for SMEs, China has recently enacted a comprehensive package of measures to ease the credit environment for SMEs, from boosting SME loans to reduce SME tax rates and support banks that lend to SMEs. The success actually from this policy is being failed with loans to SMEs up nearly 30% year on year. Taiwan too has a range of measures in place. The government provides credit guarantees and assistance in acquiring capital, especially since many SMEs actually really lack collateral. And they are also providing 
financial education and strategy consulting for the SMEs. His credit guarantee scheme alone assists around 150,000 SMEs each year, stabilizing 1.8 million jobs. At last, but far from the least, Hong Kong has done amazing work, broadening access to capital despite this current market condition. I really must congratulate Hong Kong for topping the World Economic Forum's Financial Development Index this year. The first Asian economy ever to do so. Congratulations, Hong Kong. <laughs> the rest of the world can really learn a lot from these economies on how to press the gold button in the SME market. Today, SMEs need to make most of the technology. Widely available broadband and the highly competitive PC industry provide the basic infrastructure that companies need. The proliferation of smartphones and tablets and the social networking applications that make connecting to the internet so easy is tipping the scale towards the little guys. A good product or service that meets a need has more opportunity to do triumph than ever before. Now, if we can actually differentiate ourselves, we can make a living off the internet. There are several hundred people making over 100,000 US dollars a year from their YouTube channels. Entrepreneurs with good ideas can leverage new media to enhance innovation, conduct market research, or connect to customers like never before. Now through social media and the cloud, the internet is making thousands of useful tools available to small businesses. And on top of all that, also promoting economic inclusion, the internet is leveling the playing field like never before. Today, we can start a business on the internet. And no one knows how old we are, or what sex we are, or where we come from. It doesn't matter if you are really a college dropout or a single mother. Online, what do you do? It's more than important than who you are. <coughs> Empowering more people to realize their economic potential is not only a good thing to do, it's the right thing to do. If we are to achieve sustainable growth for the future, we can't afford to leave anybody out. The last few years have presented many business challenges. Pressure on cost, pressures to stay afloat, pressure to innovate. These pressures have been multiplied by globalization, and this has impacted SME disproportionately. As market conditions change, we need to find a new market, sweet spot. Markets are becoming segmented, and people today want more personal products, products that belong to me. This opens up more opportunities for SMEs, as diverse demand creates niche market segment that big business cannot efficiently serve. Being more flexible, SMEs are in the best position to rise to the challenge of this new market economic reality. It's a real opportunity to seek new market, new needs to be fulfilled. And innovation is really the key to unlock that potential. Finally, I believe it is very important to encourage each other in this time of difficulty. As Winston Churchill said, Kais rise the highest against the wind, not with it. Let us encourage each other to rise to the challenge of this economic situation. And so like an eagle, always recognize that in adversity, there is really opportunity. So thank you for joining me today and all of us. And I'd like to close my some sharing with you on my mental checklist. Thoughts that keeps me motivated in business. First, follow your inner passion. 
we need to be sure we really believe in what we are doing and that we are really happy doing it. We need to be sure that it is essential for any business and especially for SMEs. Enjoy what we do and we will succeed. It's true, the more fun we have, the better we will do, the better our country's economy, of course, the happier and the healthier its people. Second is innovation, innovation, innovation. Always look to new opportunities. We cannot discover new oceans unless we have the courage to lose sight of the shore. Let go of ideas that no longer work and look for new ones. In the words of the famous economist J.M. Kings, the problem is not in the new ideas, but escaping the old one. We should never allow ourselves to stand still. Third, stay grounded. Think big, but check the details. Learn to walk step by step, build a business with hard work, and make sure that we know what things cost in every stage in production. By drilling down into the details, we can compete on cost, quality, and the innovation, and can find a way to change the playing field. As Proverbs says, humility comes before honor. Always recognize that we need to learn more. With persistence, there can be a better tomorrow. Just ask Jeremy Lin, Lin Su Hao. That's a great example today. On a personal note, I regularly turn to the most successful small business of them all, my faith. Jesus started with a small group of just 12 apostles. But by telling the right story and connecting people in a new way, his vision created a movement that has spent centuries and continents and continue to benefit the world by bringing happiness and stability into people's lives. Thank you very much. Chair, sure. come sit down. Um, I would like to maybe now have a dialogue with you about, you know, for example, you just now said, follow your passion, follow your heart. You love p piano. Why <laughs> did you give it up and not be a pianist and start a business? Well, I think that uh, playing piano, actually, it's, it's a good discipline for me. Okay? It's really an enjoyment. I even enjoy it today. And um, I think the most important thing is the reality, right? <laughs> When you actually went to a, a, a classroom and you feel like all the students are actually playing piano and they can just play and compose, you know, the, the piece without any thinking, then you will feel, you know, what's the difference in talent? And I have to really stay home <laughs> and, and study and, and go through the night. So, so I think the reality, just like business, that um, we have to look for our weakness and, and, and strength. Yeah. Well, you, you had two words there, stay grounded, right? Yeah. Um, Cher, I also want to explore with you. You have such a famous and successful father, Jing uh, Ying Zishen, but why did you not go into his business and wanted to start on your own? And also, Cher actually mortgaged the house that her mother gave to her as a present for 5 million NT and started her business. That was very risky. Why did you do that? Well, I, I never thought that my father would support me. I, I always actually thinking about supporting myself because I don't have too much money in college. And I uh, keep thinking I, I really need to do something to support myself. So, so that, um, I guess, just look for opportunities and you know, just find that I really found the opportunity and just go for it. And then really never actually go back, you know, and think about my father will support me. I don't know why, just the family structure <laughs> and, and the, the traditions. Yeah. Um, but did your father um, sort of influence you on your um, ways of business, your management? What, what, what has he done for you? 
Yes, I, I think that um, I think a parent, the most important thing is that uh, really show the daily behavior every day, right? Um, although my father really, I never went into the business, but when I was in high school, I left Taiwan when I was very early. My father actually write me letters every day. Not every day, but almost every day. Sometimes one page, sometimes, you know, many pages. And that time, you know, was uh, even before the fax, fax machine. And so I could receive these long letters. So I think he's, uh, he's, uh, we, we know that he loves us. And this is very important to, to be able to communicate with your children and to really teach them that um, what is what they, their philosophy and their thinking. And I think that's influenced me a lot. And um, you have started basically all your business in the IT um, aspects. Uh, any particular reason for that? Well, I actually very fortunate because I, technology wasn't very pervasive at that time. So I was a uh, very uh, early beginner. But uh, it's really a coincidence that um, my, one of my old friends from Taiwan brought this uh, old, uh, I don't know anybody remembers as old as me, it's 8186 PC motherboard to show, the, to show me in uh, San Francisco. So at that time I was very adventurous and eager to do business. So I brought this motherboard over to Moscone Center in San Francisco. And amazingly, many people wanted the motherboard. So I called back my, my friend and, and asked him to deliver. But he said that he borrowed the multiple from people and he couldn't deliver. So I went back to Taiwan to start it, uh, uh, PC motherboards. And, but I think technology in every stage in industry, in, in centuries that really have uh, bring prosperity and, and you know, the, the economic strength for people and really create a lot of jobs. And it is very important that uh, uh, we actually keep innovating, yes. Um, Xie, you mentioned about faith, um, and judging from your uh, past track record, like when I was talking about you chasing after the, the person who tried to uh, swindle you for 700000 and then also, I heard one story, in '92, Andy Grove of Intel summoned you to his office and tell you, Xie Wang, you watch it. <laughs> How did you persevere under those sort of circumstances and pressure. Yeah. I actually was uh, pretty happy. I was studying uh, VR technology, uh, semiconductor. That was called core chips, core logic chips. And I thought that I'm going to really support Intel because their core business was uh, CPU. But I never thought that, um, actually we were actually standing on a line to see Andy Grove, you know, when that time was in Hong Kong. He <laughs> was visiting Hong Kong. and. And uh, he told me, no, sure, you know, we are going to make core logic chips ourselves, so please stop. <laughs> but you know, what, what can you do? It's if you, if I am afraid of the difficulties, then I will never stop anything, right? So, so I think that it is important to really uh, set a vision and, and just go for it. And we just have to solve the situation day by day. <laughs> That perseverance, that, is that you think it's born in you or did you learn that from your father? I think the perseverance is within ourselves. Everybody has it. Right? That's why I think in APAC there's so many SMEs. And I think that uh, especially the Asians, I, it's, it's really, it's the best ingredients of Asians is the, the perseverance and, and prudence. So... Good. Well, Shea, I've got a couple of questions here. Um, how do you keep your company, HTC, innovating when most innovations in your industry, wireless, seem to come from the software and the hardware is becoming commodity? Well, you know, uh, recently, actually, it's very interesting. I think a lot of people already uh, learned and, and know it better than me that um, it's, uh, it's a big shift from uh, PC paradigm over to 
mobile lifestyle uh, devices. And there's a lot of uh, tablets and smartphones and, and smart TVs and all connected with cloud and applications. And I, I really think that these type of mobile lifestyle devices is just a, a tip of iceberg. It's very early stage. Let's, it's a very exciting business. It's a very exciting technology. We can actually utilize the, this mobile lifestyle devices and you know, change our lives and use the application to change the education, to change the healthcare, to change a lot of things that you can imagine. So you know, there's a lot of things to in innovate. And I really believe that uh, it's just very exciting to be in this type of business right now. Um, I have one more question here in front of me. You said every SME has a humble beginning with a strong vision. In addition to vision, what do you think are the key elements in driving the SME to move forward when they are facing various difficulties during the humble beginning? Yes, I, I think that um, the, one, the first one is passion, right? I think you really need to be passionate. But also allow yourself to make mistakes. I think SMEs are eager to, to be successful or they have, to, they have pressure to support the family. But without that, allow yourself some, some room to make mistakes, then it is hard to keep going. Yeah. It's very easy to learn experiences from mistakes. And also stay grounded. I think humility is very important. Always recognize that we actually doesn't really know much, and we have to learn day by day. We learn every day, and, and with the persistence and, and hard work, that's my advice that for everybody here, it's all very hard work, hard working. So, so that's, that's the key, I think. And she is a very um, good example of what she means, stay grounded. Look at her, the richest woman in Taiwan, and she's always just in her executive suit. Every time I see her, she's in a suit. <laughs> I, I don't want to spend the time to shop for, <laughs> for other clothes, that's all. Yeah. Um, I have another question for you myself. Um, you make investment into so many different companies, but you don't actually do the execution yourself. How do you provide the leadership, or get your vision executed? Yes, I actually, when I start a company, I actually do the execution for many years. It is very important to actually do the execution yourself in the beginning because uh, you really learn the business and you learn what's going on in the market, the competition and, and knowledge. And then afterwards, it is very important to find a successor because uh, I, I believe that if, if I just stick with one business, then I cannot really explore the different things. So, but if we don't actually execute in the beginning, then we will not know what type of successor it should be for the company. So I think it's still very important to execute yourself in the beginning. Mm. But, but now you don't really execute too much yourself. So how do you motivate your people? And I've heard uh, one uh, 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 line from your staff, they're loyal to you, not to the company. <laughs> so what is that? <laughs> no, so they're loyal to Xie Wang. You are oh. providing that leadership. You are the spiritual leader for them. Why? How did you achieve that? Well, I, I don't know that's really true, but uh, I really believe that everybody has really bring their own value to each other and, and to the company. And if I... I believe if I stop learning, people just threw me away because they can tolerate you for a period of time, but they will not, never tolerate you for longer, right? So I think that it is very important to keep learning and to really keep providing them value, yes. Okay, I've been given a, a, a last question, but I actually have two more in front it's of me. It's a lot. So. <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> um, what would you do immediately when you face doubts or failure or setbacks? I praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a Christian, so I've already practiced that. Um, if I face some difficulties, I say, oh, praise the Lord, I'm going to learn something new. <laughs> That's the key. What is the most difficult time in your business? 
What what was your yeah? Worst actually, experience? you already said that. Uh, actually, in the beginning, uh, I I think I was very young and I lost uh, seven hundred thousand dollars. Some people, I just started business, right? And I thought I'm going to bankrupt my sister, and that's uh, it was very nervous and very sad. So, so I actually it was a very good lesson, and I learned I I would never open account <laughs> to people that. Uh, I, I don't know, but even I know, I'm still very, very careful. Right. Um, this one, last question must be from a lady. Uh, what's your view or experience to share for women uh, entrepreneurs or women in business? It doesn't look like an easy environment for women in business in general, which I don't agree. Um, I want to hear your personal views on it. <laughs> Well, you know, I want to congratulate Hong Kong. I think uh, Hong Kong is a great environment for women in business, I think, you know. And Taiwan also. I think there's a lot of people, they have uh, established and they have spent their time to, to bring the, uh, the voice for women. So the environment is better. But there's really a lot of uh, places the women is not being treated fairly. But I, I would encourage women is that technology is something that is uh, very good for women because that um, women and technology seems like there's a firewall in between. But actually, if you think about women actually contains 50% of population or more, that women are actual users and women can give different perspective into technology and can make technology more user friendly. And it is very important, just like all the, any other business. Once you get in, you learn more, and you break the firewall. And actually, it's much easier to, you know, especially re recent times, the internet, you can stay home to create your own business. And I think there's a lot of opportunities for women right now. Yes. Good. Cher, if you have to start over again, would you have done what you have done? I just say that in the speech, I have enjoyed every moment. Yeah, so would there be anything that you would change a little bit so that it would be even faster? Well, you know, I, as I say, I'm a Christian, right? I, I forget about the past. I look forward, right? So every day I, I hope that I can learn more and, and, and to actually improve. You know, it's, I don't think that stopping is something or thinking back what I can do better is, is the key. It's something that I treasure the experiences I have. And uh, I, I think it's uh, experience bring me today. So I can do better tomorrow, I hope. Yeah. Well, please join me in thanking Xie Wang. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much.